Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, midweek Wednesday. Boy, have we got a great show planned for you today. A couple things, uh, a couple um, instructional things. We'll do a little bit of sharpening, a little bit of fabrication, and uh, I'm just looking forward to it. You know, getting down the shop. It's a beautiful day. We had some rain, early heavy rains. The rain is gone. Look at the sky. It's just so beautiful. I was I'm like a little kid when I see those white puffy clouds and the flag flying. I run out there at my camera. My neighbors must think I'm out of my mind. Why is he always photographing the damn flag? What's wrong with this guy? Anyway, let's get right to it. We're going to have a fun show, okay? Okay, first off, I want to put a special thanks out to my buddy John Fix. You know John. He's a good friend of the channel. has his own fantastic channel where he does excellent work. And John did these... Uh, beautiful lamp wick shears uh, not long ago uh, last week was it anyway he uh, he did it and he sent it to me because he knows I have a bunch of lanterns and uh, these are absolutely beautiful and uh, I'll have a link for the video you can see how John restored these uh, he sent these over and they are obviously very old you know mid 1800s and these were meant for trimming wicks for lanterns and the reason is because when a wick gets charred, uh, you have to trim off that little eighth of an inch on the top so that uh, it burns better. And you have to do that every so often. And when you trim the wick, it, the, the, the wick is an oily, charred mess, and you don't want to really touch it. So that's got this little catch back here so that when you cut the wick, it stays there, and then you could just toss it into the garbage. So it was a, a wonderful design. They were around for years. Um, this one here says patent applied for. Uh, where is it? There it is. Patent applied for. So, you know, this is an old one. Now, the only thing is it's absolutely beautiful and, uh, but it is, it needs sharpening. Now I've been doing a lot of, you know, trying to sharpen, learning with scissors and things like that. And a lot of times what you want to do is you want to, uh, keep that bevel. You don't want to change the bevel here. And you can see there's a bevel over here going down this way. And on the other side, there's a bevel. It's a, it's a different angled bevel here. So we're going to try and sharpen these up because uh, right now, let me show you how they cut. Now, like I was saying, lamp wick is very difficult to cut because of all materials that you're going to cut, that's why tailor shears have to be so sharp because you might be able to cut through paper or cardstock or something like that. And it might seem sharp. But when you try and cut paper or cloth or something, it's just going to fall, you know, it's not going to do it. So it, you have to have these extremely sharp in order to cut any type of material, which lamp wick basically is. So let's take it to the belt sander and see if we can trim up these, these edges to get that to cut the uh, paper towel, which is just like lamp wick. Now, anytime you're going to sharpen anything, you just want to imitate the bevel. You know, you don't want to make a, a different angle unless you're trying to change it, but you want to just, just clean up the bevel here so that this has a nice edge to it. Now, you have to practice. Now, unfortunately, this is peened over, so we can't take it apart, you know, because it it's peened over. But what you want to do here is you want to get this bevel and do it with the belt sander off, okay? We're using a fine belt, you can see here. But what you're going to do with the belt sander off, get the angle that you think you're going to do and how you're going to do it, practice with it off, okay? And then that's one. We're going to do it that way on that one. And for this one here, we're going to do it this way here because you see this one curves a little bit different. So now that we have it practiced, then and then you do it very lightly and you see how it's scratching on here. And, uh, and then hopefully that'll work. Okay, you can see what we did there. We just, just cleaned up the edge here. Very sharp now. Did it on both sides, you can see. Just put that, uh, let me get the light on it. There you can see, just there, very sharp. Let's try it out, see how it cuts. And again, and we just, uh, just a tight, slight bend of this one towards here. So it, it uh, you know, it's not loose when you cut it, when you close it. It should, uh, it should cut now very easily. Let's try on the, uh, the cloth. Okay, so John, lovely scissors. Thank you so much. They are just absolutely beautiful. Um, 
Let's see what we got next. Okay, next up, a lot of you wanted to see this Goodell Pratt beautiful uh, $1 breast drill done. But before I do it, I have to ask you how you want it done. Now, this, this is the dilemma. And I this is what I started out doing. I started out restoring tools by doing these. I must have six or seven that I restored. But uh, I've always liked these breast drills. The problem is with this one here is it does have a label. You see that label? Now, there's two types of restorations you can do. You can, you know, strip the label off, you know, the decal or whatever it off and, and paint it up nice and do it. Or you can try and preserve that label. And, uh, and then if you try and preserve that label, now you'll never get it, you know, looking new. The only thing you could do is kind of like a cleanup, you know what I mean? A preservation. So my question to you as an audience is what do you want to see done with this? Do you want to see it done as a preservation or do you want to see me do uh you know and lose the late you know we nobody likes to see this lost and we would love to be able to have a reproduction one that you can you know put on but let me know in the comments the way you want it done okay next up real quick remember last week we did the uh and a lot of you found it interesting and i'm glad about that we did the solderless connectors or you know we made them into solder connectors or whatever but my buddy reggie Reggie in the road did a fantastic repair on he had a, a large uh connector that was on his welder and he did a great repair on it but he was he did a repair and I said you know I wonder if any of you realize that if if you don't have something <laughs> you know the farmers are great for this farmers always wind up making their own things instead of running to the hardware store because it's like an hour away let me show you something out of a piece of... And this is why I always pick up copper scraps. I never throw any copper away. Let me show you what you could make if, God forbid, you're in a pinch and you need to make a connector. Now, since copper is such a soft metal, there's so many ways you could cut it. But the thin cutoff wheels just zip through copper like you're going through butter. It's absolutely a joy to do. Okay, you see what we did here? Now we just cut that out of the tube. Now here's what you gotta remember. Any kind of shaping you're gonna do or any kind of banging from here on you have to do, you're gonna have to anneal this. Now, what annealing means is making it into its softest um, state that this metal could be in. And what happens is anytime any metal is worked, and this was worked when it was drawn through the dies to make a tube, it became hard and when it becomes hard it becomes brittle so if you were to try and start bending this back and forth it would break or split and that's because it was it was hardened when it went drawn through the tube to make it into a tube so we anneal it by heating it up with a torch until it becomes red hot and then you could either dip it in water or let it cool naturally but uh you can only do that with like copper and silver you can't do that with steel with steel you have to let it cool extremely slow but we're going to heat this up now, get it into its softest state, and then we're just going to work this a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, for small copper like this, you only need a propane torch, and it will become cherry red. Now that the copper is nice and soft, you can use your nippers like this, and you can create your... You see how easy it cuts through there? You know, because again, this is copper now in its soft state, and you can form it to the shape you want, and we'll do that. You see how nice and easy that cuts using nippers? Okay, so there we go. In only uh, 15 minutes or so, we made ourselves a nice little clip here, and you can see I pre-bent it, because you know how I like those to curve in, so when you put the wire in there, it already crimps in nice, and you can throw some solder on, whatever you wanted to, but there it is, and uh, you know, if you had to ever... You can always make things in your shop, and that's what's so great about, especially when you're dealing with, you know, metals like that you have around, like tubing, things like that. You can always make something like that. Okay, next up, uh, as you know, I'm a huge fan of spade bits. I love them, even though they do have some inherent problems, you know, tear out, things like that. But nothing beats a spade bit for, for so many applications that I use it for, especially for recessing the head of a bolt or things like that. And I've been, I grew up with these super simple bit. I found these, you remember, on one of my poor man's flea market walks, and I just want to show you, these are about as bad as you can get. You see here, the uh, edges aren't sharp, they're worn out, they're worn down, they're probably tossed in the box because of that, but I'm going to show you how you can bring these back, okay? Now, there's uh, a couple points you have to remember. Uh, everything, we, when we talk about relief, you're going to hear that a lot in woodworking terms, and what relief means is that when a bit is passing through a uh, wood, it has to have a relief 
that uh, it doesn't drag, you know? So uh, let me, if I was to show you the side of this bit, see the side here? This is a side view of that bit that you're looking at. And if you notice here, that little uh, shoulder here on this cutting edge has to have a relief. And that is the, uh, this side is lower than this side. This is the cutting edge and this is the trailing edge. And that angle is called relief. Now, if I was to, like this one here is straight across and it looks like this, that will rub and it will give you a, a bad cut. And as you're trying to feed this into the work, this trailing edge is going to touch the work. It's not going to allow this to cut. The worst possible scenario is if you ground it backwards and you had the trailing edge before the leading edge, then it wouldn't cut. It would burn. You would just have a lot of smoke because this would be dragging. So we have to create a relief on here. You could do that with a file. And it doesn't have to be perfect. These two have to be equal, but it does, this relief could be a degree or two off from this one, but as long as it's trailing from the leading edge. Now this bit turns clockwise, so to the right. So that means this is the leading edge here, and we have to have the trailing edge lower on the, on the other side. Leading edge, trailing edge has to be lower. Same thing here. This point is damaged. As this turns, this has a relief too, because it's going to be cutting into the wood. So this edge on this side has to be lower than this edge. Again, you could do it with a file. We could do it with the uh, belts end or whatever. One last relief on here is this width. There's a slight taper here that you don't even realize because as this bit's feeding through, if this was as, if this was straight up and down, this shoulder would be rubbing. You need that relief, okay? So you got three reliefs. You got a point relief, a shoulder relief, and a side relief. Other than that, that's all you have to do is dress them up. Remember what this looks like on the top, and uh, let's just clean it up. Okay, now we just did one side of this. I want you to see. See one side, that right side, we took a little bit off there. You see the left side we didn't? You see the angle there? You see that angle? Now, the only problem is... Uh, this here has a damaged point. So we have to go below that damaged point. See there? Because it has to be at a sharp point. Both sides are damaged. So we have to take that a little bit lower. And uh, that's what we'll do. We'll take it just below that damaged point, but we'll keep that angle and then we'll do the other side. Okay, you see how much we had to take off here lower than this side to get rid of that damaged area. You see, we have to have that sharp point. There was one more relief I, I didn't know, uh, didn't mention, and you see how this is straight across like that? A lot of spade bits have a, a relief on the inside here where the tip is a slightly higher, and they tend to cut a little better. So I did that. It's only about a 10 degree relief there. So I'm going to uh, match this now on this side. See that tip is damaged? Remember what it looks like when okay, we Okay, here back. we go. Now you can see what we did. You see that nice shiny side? Nice shiny side. Those are equal. They might the right side should always look like it's up a little bit because of the the bevel, but we'll test it out now. I didn't make this into a super sharp point because we got to see that that's a cut in relief there made for that, you know, to, for chips to go. So let's try this out in the drill press and see how it operates. You might have to tweak it. Okay, let's try this out. we go what a nice clean hole that is huh absolutely beautiful these spade bits they are just so lovely to work at again because you could save them and if you just take your time and don't try and do anything just nice and easy with the file these will last your life now the three quarter inch bit wasn't quite as bad as the other one and you could see what we did here same same thing touched up the tip here uh we didn't have to really mess with the, the this had a sharp point but look at this here. This is something I noticed was cleaning up on the shaft. Irwin 88 Speed Bore patent made in the United States of America. Isn't that nice? You don't usually see stampings on these kind of bits. Let's try this one out. There 
we go. Another beautiful hole. Look at that, huh? Look at the edges on it. Just a nice, these are just <laughs> wonderful bits. Okay, so those two bits are back in service. Now, you see the difference between those two bits and a bit like this one here. This one here, you can see there's the relief on top. There has to be a slight relief here and uh, a slight relief from the tip to the inside and a slight relief from the tip to the bottom here. So it's amazing. You don't notice it because they're, you know, they're very subtle, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Once you understand it, They'll, you'll be shopping them for the rest of your life. Okay, so in closing, I uh, that was great, huh? We got a lot done today and uh, feeling good. Now we're going to go outside, enjoy the weather. Hope you are too. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.